Mary Mato. <sighs> I am so sorry I haven't been posting regular lately, but I've been a bit busy. So we are now in my apothecary and no, it's not completely done as in I need to tidy, you know, obviously there's things about I need to still put away and finish and changeovers and things like that. But I thought I would share what I've been doing. Um, I, as you know, I am now studying applied animal sciences and to become an ornithologist by the end of the year um, and to practice natural medicine for animals which, you know, having an apothecary and being a lifelong herbalist, um, you know, uh, it's just, I think, a natural progression, especially when there's a need. Um, I'm not a, against modern medicine, but I think uh, the pharmaceuticals are a little bit like a mafia syndicate. And, you know, I think there's sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. Um, and uh, you know, I I get I guess I I'm quite distrusting of anything that's pushed completely one way or the other. Like there's always usually an agenda of what you know. You just have to look at history. Um, but enough of that. <laughs> so the lighting in here is dismal. What's not helping is my dark lampshade, which I'm going to put in the den. I'm going to do a quick bit of a quick show through in a couple of the rooms and things I've got going on. So I guess it's a bit of a catch up post. I am when I've done a bit of tidying up in here, I'm going to go through more in depth what I have where. So in the apothecary that is. So here I've got my oracles and tarot cards. Um, there's like three or four decks in one of these boxes or three, and three or four decks in one of these storage boxes. So I've actually got over a hundred decks, which you probably can't notice by looking at that. Um, I do actually want to make crochet boxes. Yeah, I know, crochet, um, for my cards and when I, you know, finally have everything done in here and a, a bit on top of my time management, I'm going to finally get back on top of the uh, weird divination site and sharing the, the cards and all that sort of jazz. And uh, as I do that, I would like to start getting these decks done. I also want to make some more um, storage baskets for things like crystals. Um, they're my staves. Uh, I've got elder, apple, uh, wormwood, a few other there, oak, um, do do do, uh, some related books, and then here behind these matting, why do I have um, gym matting in here? So all the floors in this place is buckled, like it, the whole place needs to be reposted. I'm renting, so you know what do you do? Um, but I'm actually going to put the matting underneath the rug because I've decided this is also going to be a place where I dedicate myself to stretching in the morning and, you know, spending time on myself. To me, an apothecary is not just a place of working with plant matter and, you know, the focus of healing. You know, it's uh, also the space where I, you heal on yourself. Um, I think sometimes we're so focused on what we can create and put out and how we can help others. We often don't pay that attention to ourselves or we do. <clears throat> and then life comes in a wave and takes over and takes us off our board for quite a few distance and then it's like oh shit <laughs> months have gone past no wonder I'm making here and there I haven't been doing this I haven't been doing that so you know I will be putting that uh, gym matting underneath this rug so it'll be nice and spongy which my cat will also appreciate she likes to come in here and do what cats do lounge and be a, a lazy so-and-so <laughs> um so this, this lot of shelves here, they're temporary. I'm going to get another one like this. 
uh, to replace that because this is like one, two, three, four, five different shelves, DVD shelves put together. So I'm actually just going to get a large bookshelf like this to put these. So this this uh, column is pretty much my salts. So I've got some bulk salts there. I do need to get more, of course. Some votive candles in the bottom there. I don't know if I'm going to keep my candles there. I tend to like having things in in uh, sections. I don't like, you know, some a salt here, a salt there, and a salt there. And I like everything in the same spot. Um, it's just how my brain works. I've, so I've also got um, rolled up incense sticks. I have uh, incense resins. I have uh, blends of incense. I do like incense blends. They're a lot easier to work with, especially if you're using a cauldron. Um, but the cones are really handy. However, <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to put the cones here. Like I'll keep the sticks and the resins and the blends. But for the cones, I mean, I think I might actually put them in my actual uh, work desk. Um, so anyway, so this is my salts pretty much. Salts and uh, incense and resins. And this is my decks, staves or runes, uh, crystals and some books. I'm not a really big fan of crystals. I just feel like it becomes a bit rapey of the earth. And <clears throat> I kind of get irritated when um, I see so-called uh, spiritually in tuned and they just have these major big crystals and they're not cheap. And it, it, I don't know, it gets to a point of vulgarity or flashing wealth, if you like. And you know I, I don't know there's something really I know I'm not the only one that feels there's something deep in my gut that feels visceral when I see that kind of display and and then to then lump I'm spiritual with it you know I just you know I don't know it just it just it rubs me the wrong way in all directions <laughs> so this little section here are two tall chests or boys and um basically I need to finish a pattern I started it did it I'm going to make some tweaks to hold seed packets and this is basically all my seeds oops sorry <clears throat> oh so in here as well yeah I have a lot of seeds I've got stuff in there I need to um, so anyway, this is dedicated to seeds, uh, foraging. I haven't gone, I thought originally I was going to put seeds here in foraging, but I just have too many seeds. So this stuff here is um, my forager's belt, you know, some lopies. Um, this one's from Germany. Um, quill tips for my, my feathered quill. Sealants, ink. Uh, tags for plants so this sort of stuff that I use for foraging and plants will actually go into those drawers over there and I might just keep this for candles so here I've got my flower press uh, uh, books I like to reference straight away so I've got my botany in a day it, it's one of those things so I I'm currently doing also on top of my applied animal sciences I'm doing um, another herbal course um, when you're a herbalist it never really ends you're always studying and something I so appreciate being a horticulturalist is that I am so down with the morphology and the terminology now and the language of being a horticulturalist that it just it blows to water another level of being a um, herbalist like it's just it's just another planet like it just adds that more depth. I'm going to do a big uh, <laughs> science sort of, you know, nerd spill vlog at some point and how it interrelates, how wonderful it is, how important it is. And it's so much more important than putting out content of yourself out there, twerking your backside, and which is like a geared to the younger folks out there doing this. You know, I, uh, I've been watching... Uh, a few things just to see what's going on that young people are getting shown and they're being presented this is a pretty much your life now um it's literally like saying that young people own the only currency they have is their bodies and sex 
what the hell has happened? But it's not even subtle. It's in the face. And it's like the sciences take a lifetime. And it's in other universes. It's just amazing. And if you, if you don't like science, maybe you've had a shit teacher. There's shit teachers out there that are like watching, you know, a blank wall. Um, science is um, the understanding of nature. Nature is magic. You, you must understand things on a mundane, pragmatic, factual way before you can delve into anything else which is not founded yet. But the thing is with science that has lost its way, it's no longer holding the principles of respect for the natural world. Yeah? You know, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it which comes from its parent called, of philosophy or philosophy, uh, which is pretty much wisdom. Um, you know, having knowledge for the sake of knowledge is not wisdom. So anyway, I digress. I'm going to do a big thing, and I, hopefully I get some, yeah, uh, some of the younger heads turning and having another look at science. Because remember that a lot of this shit that is pushed on to younger people if you're a young person listening to this is to distract you from the actual real crap that will benefit you and will blow your mind and make your world a better place because as long as they can keep you down low and functioning at a minimal level then they can control you yeah anyway enough of that <laughs> So I'm going to clean this out more. So, and I haven't laid out my altars and everything like I usually do seasonally. Um, I've decided this is going to be my little tiny dedication altar, which is pretty much Midsummer Litha. We have just turned to Autumn's Loo, but because I haven't done what I usually do per season, especially for Midsummer or Litha, um, I am actually going to you know keep it out for a week and do it properly and do a couple of rituals to at least send off the season properly so this is my oils um oils section um these are little cauldrons i like to burn things on this is an offering plate close the ears <laughs> it's so funny as i walk on my knees through here my knees dip because the floor's all collapsing so shocking um, in here I've got uh, soap and candle tools and stuff. I might even move that over there so it's close to the oils. Soaps, candle wax, that sort of thing sort of go hand in hand. I do have a flower press in there as well also which will fit into the drawers, uh, one of the drawers. Lots of bell candles. <laughs> So needless to say, I'll just move those bell candles over there. There's candle stuff over there because then it's next to all the essential oils and uh, tinctures, oil tinctures I've got made up in there. Whee! Now, yeah, pastel mortars found dandy tastic. However, oh, my lip balm. This is one of the most yummiest lip balms I've, I've uh, acquired recently. And yeah, it's vegan. Um, sorry about the glowing light. It's a blender. You know, pestle mortar is great, especially when I've got a nice big thumping big one like this. It's sitting on my mandel um, chopping board. However, oh, when you've got some tough crap to get through. So these are my dried orange peels I'll be blending up. <sighs> Blender man. <laughs> my uh, m my uh, modern um, pestle and mortar. <laughs> So I like the old stuff, but sometimes technology manages. Whew. Speaking of which, I'm, I'm going to do a mood board uh, for my direction of being a herbalist and utilising my apothecary and my garden and fine-tuning. Um, and what I'm going to do is create a digital one. So the computer screen there will basically have a... a um, I can't talk this morning for some reason. I haven't talked for a while on the vlog. That's probably why I feel a little bit out of uh, vocal shape. Um, I'm actually going to do a screensaver in my mood board. And the mood board is where I want to be in a year, two, three, four, five. Um, I will be moving again to more rural. Um, 
we are this is another thing to flag that I need to do as a, a vlog we're going through some really strange times where ducks are being discriminated against and dogs and cats are being pushed as the only animals as you can have as pets even in regional country Victoria it's the country and they want to act like the regional is a city and it's like I'm sorry, I've lived in London, <laughs> I was born overseas, I lived in the Melbourne QV on the top floor and this is not a freaking city, okay? And it, it, it just seems to be pushed by a bunch of people who just see dollar signs and selling land and, you know, it just, it's, again, it's another one of those, isn't it? It just viscerally makes me sick, like seriously, people that worship money, I think it's fine to have enough for what you need. But this just at all cost and th they don't love anything except money and it's not even real. It's just crazy. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. Uh, what can I say? I'm off of the old ways. Um, the natural world and your relationship to it is the only thing that truly matters. Everything else is a consequence of your relationship to the natural world everything be it your racial group be it your health everything is to do with your relationship with the natural world that's enough of that so this table here with lots of shit that i need to do <laughs> i got to uh, separate the the lambsies heads from some of the leaves and baggy those i do have my herbs and uh, dried bits or in sort of sections I have actually decided to organize my my apothecary uh, ingredients when it comes to the plant kingdom by animal, by animal families by families so here I got entries so at the, around these top drawers here or uh, can't talk this more units I've got basically trees that are sacred to my ancestry being a, a druid ethnically so i didn't just pick up and decide i was no no we come from a bloodline on my mother's side and um all these trees are spirit trees for us and i had things handed down by my uncle was who was the last practicing one of my mother's clan because they all betrayed our ancestors basically and turned to the invasive abrahamic religion in gibraltar so you know we are where we are on the last so I've got the sacred trees um, and then pretty much this one is pretty much dedicated all major trees and then I've got the Lamiaceae, oh no, yeah Lamiaceae or the mint family, I've got the Umbrellifica, uh, things like carrot and dill so from that family and then I have Allium or onion family I've got root, I've got nightshade, and then going down towards the bottom, I've got poaceae or the grass family. I also have got index drawers, which I need to relabel and sort out. I need to get some more paper bags, brown paper bags, uh, tools, spoons, things like that, spirit sticks. I've got uh, these are beds that I have my my um, effigy dolls that I make for connecting with my ancestors uh, this is what I don't understand those who are just taking up things within traditional witchcraft and they're not ethnically European like it's all about venerating for us Europeans it's, it's, it's about venerating or, or white folk it's about venerating our ancestors which is why these deities look like us why would you want to venerate someone else's grandma or an ancestor? Why can't you venerate your own? Like, <laughs> it's, teaching, it's teaching people to not love themselves or to celebrate their own ancestors. And it's kind of scary because, you know, oh, I think it's deliberate. I don't think they want anyone to have strong roots or ancestry, no matter who you are. But anyway, I, I don't get it. Like, literally... <laughs> The whole point of the old ways is to venerate your ancestors. So, you know, why, why? I have a statue of a Ganapathy, you know, the, the Indian um, elephant got. I don't venerate him. He just looks cool. <laughs> 
but he ain't in my altar room. <laughs> And, you know, I don't uh, see him as an ancestral spirit. I can see um, ancestral spirits and deities from other cultures and respect that, but uh, there's no freaking way I'm going to see it as my own and treat it like my own. It's not, you know, and that's where the line is. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. So here I've got the um, legume or uh, legumacy. My legume AC, Fab AC, uh, the legume family, and then going down to Rasteraceae or the daisies, sunflowers, that sort of thing, which includes the calendula. Um, but I do have the the Fab AC going across a bit, and then I've got uh, some of other families here, um, including succulents. Uh, which there's actually quite a few families that encompass the succulent family. But anyway, so I've definitely got a system going on now which is more uh, aligned with my horticultural practice as well. The other thing too is um, traits of a plant tend to have commonality within a family. Funny that. So, you know, the, the traits within the Asteraceae, so for, for example, um, tend to be similar, or the Lamiaceae, not just in um, morphology, how a plant presents itself when you identify a plant uh, in its genus, once you know its family and a species and even cultivar. Um, they have similar botanical qualities, aromatic uh, oils, and chemical properties, which we use in the apothecary. So I think it makes sense to Fargo organize your apothecary accordance to your family. And again, this is where being a horticulturalist, trained horticulturalist or botanical scientist helps because it's second nature to you. You're, you're living in that world in your head and in that language so you don't really have to oh what's that when you see a genus and a species bang you know exactly what it likes how it thrives the seasons the soil the water requirements everything like that and that does have a relevance to how it is then applied within natural medicine and natural medicine is not just the physicality it's also the ethereal the things that you can't see which is why we burn incense yeah um now i do have to get a whole lot of jars i really love using coffee tins however you do need to line them some well most plants most plant matter has a, an oil, some are more volatile than others and if you have it exposed to tin it's not a great thing so that will be lined, they are lined with a zip baggie um, I do need to get more, also more jars, labels I started doing labels and I just love how they turned out and basically I'm going to do the same sort of labels on everything when it comes to the apothecary. Um, the other thing I want to do as well is, you know, I do like to save baggies of seeds. However, when it comes to things like calendula or the American marigolds or, you know, poppy, I, I like to have a really big ass jar like this of seeds because I use it so often. I usually you know propagate it so often that it makes no sense just to have everything in these little baggies unless I'm selling little baggies um, I do like have a I mean case in point sunflower seeds um, you know so hmm. I so anyway I need to do the index drawers that tapestry will become a a curtain um, I'm going to make a prong to hang my guitar um some people are freaking weird has someone come in and goes, oh, do you play it i'm like no nah, i hang my guitar from my earlobes <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you <laughs> like i don't know what it is some people in you know this neck of the woods um they like to think they know a lot and then when they see you actually know something or you've done training in an area they're like straight away you know trying to find fault with you somewhere so they can feel better about themselves this is like fucking hell man wait where, where did where did the 
respect or just chilling out man um when when someone when you're presented with someone who actually has committed time money and study to a topic uh, why should that make you feel bad you know i'm not rich i struggle i have zero savings i you know paid off one student loan yes last year for horticulture now i've got another one um i struggle and i'm physically disabled you know it's hard you know don't don't then uh be a prick of, i don't i don't know i understand it i don't know if it's an epidemic of just being a a douche if it's global <laughs> or, or i expected it would be a little bit different in the, in the country i mean it's like man i could actually help and do a lot of good out here but because of uh, people being like this they're more concerned with saving face and pretending they know what they don't know than they are with um actually letting people who know what they're talking about or doing like myself actually help <laughs> so crazy it's the same shit with health and fitness i i get i get so frustrated when i hear folks who aren't trained in the applied human sciences anywhere and they start spouting about training and bad mouthing bodybuilders and this and that and it's like they, they, they don't just like horticulture they don't have the actual scientific background and understanding on a pragmatic level uh things such as kinesiology biomechanics the applications and the interactions or even the interactions of the biomechanical f uh plane in with the the dietetics and it just it blows my mind and unfortunately because so many people are deliberately dumbed down with their knowledge and education these days for bullshit which is not something you can improve the world with um i think they fall for it i don't know it's just weird it's just weird strange world man i'm not liking it not liking it all not liking it all but what do you do you just you keep uh doing what you um <laughs> feel you need to do anyway so i finally put together this desk too it was literally sitting out here for three months in pieces everywhere it was like a nightmare that i just didn't want to go through <laughs> i did it took me four freaking days none of the pieces had name uh lettering or alphabet on the um bits and i had to guess what was what it was a nightmare so this shelf was actually in the apothecary i've moved it out here it's a mess in here in the den because i want to use this one for um obviously in here this is a shed shelf there was another shed shelf here which i have in the back i'm going to put it into the shed and start finally organizing the shed i want to get another bookcase and then also take this shed shelf into the back i need to organize my shed um my messy kitchen herbs from this morning um a couple a few garn projects that are coming this is actually inspired by the hicks uh carpet in the shining this is a, a garn i made with uh combining three different garns which is pretty much autumnal um one of the shows i watched which was like oh my god what are they doing to our kids was euphoria and this is a throw that was on there and i've looked at some people's patterns you gotta and they're attaching the motive to the square i'm like what so i actually did this pattern without having to sew the motive to the square it's worked all in one piece um so that's another pattern that'll be coming soon it will be on the in the ribbler store i'll do a, a good a vlog on um my garn hopefully over this weekend but that's it from me blessed be mary part i haven't disappeared it's just been crazy and oh yes i'm taking freya to the vet again tomorrow because i think one of the boys broke her wing i'll keep you updated on that too um she's eating she's okay but she's a little bit ginger so i don't feel proficient to feel through her wing without actually causing more damage at the moment um you can actually feel through to see where there's actually a break without having to have imaging done but again i'm not that trained yet to actually do that i don't want to cause her more damage or trauma so we'll be going to the vet tomorrow and fingers crossed for us or flippers crossed for us or the 
of the feathers at probably 